Hello, Hybrid Mix Techniques. Uh, this will be a short lecture, a mini lecture, if you will, about essential mix techniques. This is a topic I normally cover in class in hybrid, but since I'm out of town this week and you are doing work on your own, uh, you'll probably want this information. I'll keep it short and simple, but it will help your homework and perhaps help you even consider different approaches to mixing, which is, of course, the goal. A uh, variety of things we're going to talk about, basically EQ, basic EQ strategies, and basic compression strategies. Hmm. So where does, he, where does EQing start? EQing starts with an opinion, and you have to have an opinion. I mean, this is something that, you know, I've tried to teach EQ and basic mixing to students for a long time, and the starting, getting started is the hardest part. I will watch beginning mixers just stare at the console and have no idea where to where to go, where to begin. And it begin, you begin with an opinion. And how do you get an opinion? You get an opinion by listening and listening to a lot of music. And when you listen to music, you start, you know, building preferences or turns towards certain things. And of course, listening critically is much more important. When you listen critically, you can start listening to relative balances in a mix. You can start thinking about panning and how things are EQ'd and how effects are used. And once you start listening critically, you start forming these opinions. And once you get these opinions and preferences, you know what you like, and then you can EQ. So often in audio school, we start teach you to EQ before you even have opinions. So this is a difficult thing, and you need to work on your own and listen to music and on your own and kind of come up with your own opinions. And once we EQ, then we apply a construct, su a construct such as fit, fit, or feature, which you've probably heard of before. Josh Mall teaches it in his classes, and it comes from, and I don't know if it originates there, but I, I, I know it as coming from author Alex Case, who's a great audio teacher at UMass Lowell, and has written a couple fantastic textbooks. And it's fit, fitter feature, fix, fitter feature. It's, it's a way to think about what EQ does and why we would use EQ. And so, of course, you could use EQ to fix a problem. Maybe you've got uh, you know, a muffled vocal and you need to add some treble to it. Perhaps you have a ring on a snare or a plosive on a vocal or you need to you know, take some low end out of the symbols. These are all fixing EQ solutions. Fitting EQ, this is a little bit more difficult. This is when you carve some frequencies in one element to help them fit better with another element. And uh, a classic example of it is exemplified here by this fantastic meme, one of the best audio memes out there, showing, hey, let's take some low end out of the bass so we can put the kick drum right in that little pocket there. And this is a classic EQ move people have been doing for many years. Feature Featuring, of course, is using EQ to make something stick out, like adding a ton of low end on a kick drum to make it thump, or uh, making a telephone vocal sound, you know, band passing a vocal, or adding a lot of shimmery uh, high frequencies to a cymbal. These are all feature approaches. So going over the workflow here, it starts with an opinion. Listen to music, listen to work, you know, listen to famous records, why they, you know, read about them, talk to people, why do they sound good, why do people think they sound good, and start building what I call your soundclopedia in your head, a kind of a list of good sounding examples. And then once you have that, and once you have an opinion, then you apply fit, fit, or feature, and you ask yourself a question, hey, what do I need to do at this particular moment? I know there's something wrong with this element in front of me. How am I going to use EQ to fit, fix, or feature it? And then you ask yourself, you know, what frequencies do I need to change? Oh, you know, I need to add some treble or I need to cut some bass or whatever it is. So this is the workflow. And I think most of you in this class are already at this point, but I was going over it because it's a good starting place and it's a good review. So when you first start EQing and it's new to you, the approach I like to teach to newbies, I call it the low, mid, high technique. When I was in high school, I, when I first started EQing, I had a treble knob and a bass knob. It was like a two-band EQ. It was a really simple decision. Do you need more or less bass or more or less treble? Um, EQing, in this situation, I call it the low, mid, high. You have three bands to think about. You've got the lows, usually 100 hertz and below. You've got the mids, usually 100, say 10K. And then you've got the high frequencies of the treble, which are above 10K or something like this. And the actual frequency doesn't really matter where the crossover is on these filters. But the point is, you can make a really quick decision, even beginners can, like, do I need more or less bass? 
Do I need more or less mids? Do I need more or less highs? And so this is a really simple approach that I like to show newbies because they can start thinking about and dividing the frequency bandwidth in their head. And so I'm thinking you guys in hybrid mix techniques, you're beyond this approach. This is something that maybe your freshman year when you were first starting to mix, you would be using. But uh, you're probably a little bit farther along in this process. You're probably at what I refer to as the boost and sweep method. This is where you boost you know, a peaking filter. Maybe you make it really narrow like this. Um, you probably just boost it and you sweep it around and you look for the frequency you're trying to find. You know there's something wrong. You find it, cut it, or find it and boost it. Uh, and some EQs, like the Fab Filter here, you can actually click on a little solo button and it will make a really sharp peaking filter for you and you can use it to find it. Um, this approach works great. I think everybody does it. Even the pros do this, even if they don't want to admit it, they use this technique. Of course, you can't use this on a live recording, a live broadcast, or a, you know something, something that's a make or break you get one take on. You, know, you don't want to be in front of the audience doing front of house, sweeping the vocal mic. But it is a good technique when you're getting sound and you're uh, you know, preparing um, a mix off, offline. So um, a more advanced technique than this is using your actual ear training. You're all doing ear training. Start actually targeting your EQ decisions. Say, what frequency do I think this is? Well, I think it's around 2K and kind of zoom into that zone. I really like the Rational Acoustics um, set seven bad system dwarves approach to this. You can get t-shirts and stickers like this. And the idea is in your head, you're dividing the frequency range up into very specific concepts like tubby, marky, muddy, boxy, honky, barky, edgy, and so sibilant. So this is uh, kind of like the low mid high technique, except now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I could have just looked at the number seven there and I wouldn't have to count it. I'm kind of a moron. But anyway, you know, it's like seven approaches. And as you get more sophisticated in audio, you may end up with 10 or 15 or even, hey, if you get really good and you got a 31 band perception, you might even have 30 frequencies you divide it up. So use your ear training. So this is about all I wanted to say in hybrid here in the first week of you doing music mixing regarding EQ. You know, come up with some opinions. Start the workflow of, you know, what needs to be fixed. Does it, you need fit fitter feature? And then use one of these EQ techniques and try to challenge yourself and use your ear training and start kind of guessing where the frequencies are. Okay.